Oprah Winfrey is back in the news today for a couple of reasons, but they all surround the release of the new musical remake of The Color Purple. While doing press for the new film starring Taraj P. Henson, The Little Mermaid's Haley Bailey, Peacemakers Danielle Brooks, and Fantasia Barrino making her silver screen debut, Oprah Winfrey was a star of the original version of the film from 1985, and she's a producer of this reboot. While speaking with The View earlier this week, Oprah appeared to drop some major shade towards both the film and the people involved on that show. One of the hosts of The View is, of course, Whoopi Goldberg, who is not only a hilarious woman, but was also a major player in the original version of Color Purple. In fact, herself and Oprah Winfrey had a very silly feud back in the day, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The show producers were upset to see that Oprah would not be appearing alongside the cast of the film on an episode of The View from last week. Whoopi Goldberg introduced the crew on an all-purple set, and they were on the show to talk about the movie, their careers, and the producers had hoped that Oprah Winfrey would make an appearance and allow the show to market itself as a reunion episode. Whoopi actually makes an appearance in the new film and has appeared on set but with no Oprah in sight. The reason that the view is particularly annoyed with Oprah's absence is because she has been appearing on other talk shows to promote the film. Oprah has appeared on The Drew Barrymore Show and Sherry Shepard's Sherry. Around the same time, Oprah gave a candid interview with People Magazine about her recent weight loss and how she was aided by medication, but let's talk about The View for a minute. Despite her absence from the episode, it was well received and Whoopi said that she felt a strong connection with the people who actually did show up. As I mentioned earlier, Oprah has been making rounds to the talk show circuit. She was on The Drew Barrymore Show. The host, Drew Barrymore, was beyond excited that Oprah was there to be her special guest. During the interview, Drew was very touchy-feely and because the internet is the way that it is, people called for her to be cancelled. Let go of Oprah, lady! But as it turns out, Oprah was not only okay with this, but it actually made her feel more comfortable to talk about her personal life on top of the film. But this appearance sparked some backlash. Like, why was she on this show but not The View with Whoopi Goldberg? Back in the day, Whoopi Goldberg was nominated for an Oscar for her part in the original Color Purple, and according to author Kitty Kelly, she became enemy number one to Oprah Winfrey. Rumors were spread, and the book noted that following the nomination, Whoopi actually never made an appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show, which was odd, considering at one point Oprah invited the entire cast of the original movie onto her show to celebrate. She also notably let Whoopi off of the guest list of her 2006 Legends Ball, which saw a ton of A-list celebrities in attendance. Oprah and Whoopi eventually ran into each other at a party thrown by Tyler Perry a few years later, where they supposedly squashed any beef that existed between them. Either that never actually happened, or something new has taken place, since Oprah and Whoopi are still never seen in the same room together. But it's not just Whoopi Goldberg who seems to take issues with Oprah's attitude. One of the stars of the new film, Taraj P. Henson, delivered a tearful interview that touched on pay disparities for black women in Hollywood. This past week on Instagram, the Oscar-nominated actress acknowledged this social media response to her interview with Gail King from Sirius XM Radio. During the interview, she expressed that she was just tired of working hard and getting paid a fraction of what she deserved. Posting on Instagram, she thanked her fans for their response to her message with compassion, understanding, and support. She shared a photo of herself and Oprah and wrote that this is so important for black women and all women of color to support each other. It is also imperative to have women of color in decision-making positions positions across all industries. While there were a lot of rumors circulating that Oprah Winfrey was some kind of a tyrant on set, those rumors were quickly squashed thanks to Taraj's post. She wrote under the photo that Oprah was nothing less than a steady and solid beacon of light to all of the cast members of The Color Purple. She provided encouragement, guidance, and unwavering support to everyone there. She concluded by saying that Oprah told her personally to reach out for anything that she needed, and she did. One call one conversation, one decision making black women to make her feel heard. The tearful part of the interview came as King asked Taraji about past comments that the Empire actress made about contemplating leaving her acting career behind. She told King and her fellow guests that she was tired of hearing her sister saying the same thing over and over again. She told the host that she hears people talk about how hard she works and that the math just isn't mapping. There is an entire team of people above her that make the majority of the money in the film industry, and she's voiced her frustrations that every time 
time she does something and breaks through another glass ceiling, and when it's time to renegotiate, she's just at the bottom again. Like, she didn't do what she just did. And it wears on your mental health because the question is, why? Like, what does it mean for you as an actor? Gabrielle Union backed up her claim, saying that there was not a word of a lie told by this woman. In fact, Viola Davis from The Woman King reposted this clip to her Instagram simply with the caption, this and a few hands pointing up. A little while back, Taraj was seriously considering leaving the US altogether, living in another country. Considering how stellar of an actor she is, along with the rest of the cast, Hollywood really needs to get their act together and pay their people. The strike should hopefully push Hollywood in the right direction, but we may not know for a long time. For anyone interested, The Color Purple comes out on Christmas Day in theaters everywhere, and I'll be checking it out. As mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, Oprah received a ton of backlash this year for a few reasons. Most recently, it was because she told the world that her weight loss was the result of medication rather than natural work. The backlash was swift and not unwarranted as Oprah literally started Weight Watchers, which is a company that encourages weight loss through behavioral changes, nutrition science and real connections. Instead of encouraging people to eat better and make positive changes, she told the world to literally take a chill pill. She is not only a member of the company still, but she claims to follow the practices to this day. Considering she's almost 70 years old, we can understand her feeling the need to shift from being physical to using medication. She addressed the backlash and told people that she was just done with all of the hate from people and particularly herself. The medication is approved by the FDA as a prescription for managing weight and and staying healthy, and in her lifetime, this feels like a relief rather than a burden. Her goal with taking the pills is to take down the stigma surrounding them, as well as granting her a chance to live a healthier life. However, earlier this year, Oprah received an insane amount of backlash after announcing that she was going to be helping the people of Maui. Oprah and Dwayne Johnson announced that they would be starting the relief fund for the victims of the Maui wildfires. The People's Fund of Maui was given a solid $10 million to get off the ground, $10 million donated by Oprah and Dwayne combined. So why is it just Oprah that received so much hate online? Well, it's because she has a net worth of like $2.8 billion. That's billion with a B. The world is collectively furious at Oprah for having the audacity to ask working class citizens for charity when most people can barely afford to put food on their own tables. Dwayne Johnson and Oprah donated $5 million each to give the fund a head start. Well, guess what? $5 million to Oprah Winfrey is like $500 to us. That is chump change. The world is understandably frustrated. Imagine someone with a physical gold bar around their neck asking you for spare change on the street like, hey, what's that thing around your neck? It's shiny. It makes me feel bad about myself. Maybe use that. Thankfully, the fund has actually been a pretty positive thing for the people of Maui. Dwayne Johnson appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast a few weeks ago and explained that the fund has been helping families affected by the fires by granting them $1,200 a month per person in their household, meaning that some families are receiving like five or six grand every month, which is a lot. Thousands of people across the island are no longer living in fear or stress about how they're going to afford to live following the devastating wildfires that took out a large portion of the island this year. Oprah's involvement really should not be the focus, because point instead focus on the terrible things that she's done outside of the Maui thing, okay? Let's not forget what her show really was. Oprah used to bring the most vulnerable people she could find onto her show to share their stories, and while some were just actors or people sharing some positive stories, there were also also, so many people who would just cry on her show. Let's not forget the other careers that this woman is responsible for creating, especially programs with some of her buddies like Dr. Phil. Oprah is not just responsible for many hopes being squashed live on air, but she is also the creator of many talk show celebrities like Dr. Oz and, as I just mentioned, Dr. Phil. Now, before Dr. Phil had his own show, Oprah had asked him and his courtroom consulting firm to help him with a trial. Before meeting Oprah, Phil apparently had zero interest in being a television television personality, but Oprah made him see the light, so to speak. According to Phil, she helped him understand the power of these shows and what they were truly made for. Now for Phil, he brings people onto his show who are struggling with personal issues that just so happen to be good for TV. Remember the Catch Me Outside girl? Dr. Phil made her famous. But it's not just Dr. Phil that's had some controversial moments. Her other protege, Mr. Oz, has, well, Doctor. Dr. Oz has had some pretty rough moments. His show is centered around medicine and health, bringing so-called experts on every week. 
My mother loved this show. Oprah Winfrey was partnered with both of these people, meaning that whatever their shows made, she got a little bit of something for her troubles. She doesn't like to tell us how much she actually made from those programs, but considering how many episodes they have and how long they've been running for, it's probably quite a bit. Number 10, the NDAs. Confidentiality agreements are not uncommon in the world of Hollywood. Marvel will literally have someone take you out even if a single line leaks to the public. In Kitty Kelly's Tell All book about Oprah, the author mentions the confidentiality agreements that co-workers and guest stars are made to sign. This included everyone from Tom Cruise to the person who made his muffins. Over 500 staff members were forced to sign this document and one former employee, Elizabeth Cody, tried to write a book about her time working for Oprah, but she was apparently stopped by the courts, still being tied to the agreement that she had signed. The NDAs were not meant to be a way to just keep like show secrets safe, but any and all of Oprah's secrets as well. According to Elizabeth, the documents were signed by almost everyone in her life. She may have this brand of sweetness and kindness, but that is not how she is. Elizabeth felt that she was in Oprah's pocket after she signed the paperwork. In 2010, a lawsuit was filed against Oprah and her company, Unicus Performance Training, claimed that they were fired for violating the terms of her agreement, specifically involving advertising with her name or the website or the show. Number 9. A Diva On air, Oprah is portrayed as a wholesome, sweet lady, but according to her stepmom, there is an unknown side to this woman. Hidden from fans for years, according to Barbara, Oprah is one of the most controlling people you'll ever meet. She claims that Oprah would not allow them to stay at her house when they tried to visit, forcing them to stay in hotels with money out of their own pockets. Barbara also said that Oprah was quick to anger when it came to her staff, with several people being fired left and right over the years, but that's not all. Despite being a billionaire, Barbara allows her to stay at her home for visits, something that Oprah apparently hates. The first time she stayed over, Oprah allegedly complained that her bed sheets were not a thousand threads and her bath towel wasn't big enough. I get the bath towel thing. Big bath towels for the win. Never going back. This woman has billions of dollars to do literally anything she wants, and what she wants to do apparently is just make her stepmom's life a living hell. Number eight, controversial beliefs. Oprah has had plenty of controversial people on her show, from medical experts, fake psychologists, to celebrities. Whatever's good for TV is good for Oprah. But one particular incident that caused a ton of backlash for Oprah was when she did an interview with Suzanne Summers. She was brought onto the show to share her beauty secrets and how she was able to look so young. Well, according to some, this treatment that she does on a regular basis will help. Suzanne claimed that she rubs estrogen cream into her skin on one arm and smears progesterone onto the other arm. Progesterone is just a fancy way of saying steroids. She also claimed that she took 60 supplements and vitamins a day, 40 in the morning and 20 before bed. What really stirred the pot was that this woman claimed to be a health expert and a self-help author, but surprise, surprise, doctor, she is not. Medical experts started bashing Oprah, claiming that this type of extreme hormone therapy would actually be the cause of several diseases and illnesses, you know, like cancer. Despite Suzanne's claims that her specially made non-FDA approved bioidenticals are natural and safe, they're actually just synthetic conventional hormones that you can buy at a pharmacy. Oprah did everything in her power to sell this idea to her audience, believing 100% that the methods were useful, even claiming to have used some of these methods that made her feel incredible. So this lady would rather risk her audience getting cancer than just telling them the truth. That is solid. Number seven, an advocate for Maui. Oprah was claiming to be many things during the whole Maui backlash thing. A good boss, a charitable woman, and an advocate for the island of Maui. By starting her Maui fund and donating her spare millions, she made her mark in the public as a woman who she cares so much that she's asking you to give her money as well. Isn't that nice? As I've mentioned in previous videos, Oprah would not care about Maui or its people if she didn't have a vested stake on the island. Oprah's had property in Maui for quite some time, being almost a second home to her, and when the fire started raging, she started funding. But think about all the other things that have happened in the past couple of years around the world. We all forgot about Australia on fire in 2020. Western Canada was on fire at the beginning of this year. Some parts of Florida have been underwater for months, yet Oprah has decided to dedicate her time and money to helping an area where she has a vacation home. Number six, the free cars. Now, who could forget Oprah's famous words, you get a car, you get a car, everybody gets a car. The moment was historical on her series, and was parodied time and time again, and it still does get parodied to this day. However, what a lot of people don't know is that it wasn't as simple as, here are some keys, 
Have fun. When someone gives out anything on television, there's a catch. For Oprah's audience, the catch was if they wanted to drive away in a brand new car, they'd have to pay $7,000 in taxes first. While Oprah's studio would cover the sales tax and registration for each car, which was a lot, the audience members were given a choice to either pay the seven grand and take their car home or just simply take the cash instead. The infamous moment on the show featured 11 teachers who were, according to Oprah, in desperate need of a car. They, along with the audience, received keys in a box on camera that Oprah claimed to be for their new cars. Everything has a catch even now. For someone who is known to be charitable and generous, the word free really means something different to Oprah. Number five, there were fabricated memoirs. Oprah launched her book club in 1996, a reading encouraging segment from her talk show. It turned any book that she liked into a bestseller. In September of 2005, she picked A Million Little Pieces, a brutal and painful memoir by James Frett about his years long struggle with substance control issues. A Million Little Pieces became a best selling non-fiction book of that year, and Frey was asked to appear on her talk show to discuss the book. Oprah called it gut-wrenching. However, the following year, a news outlet ran a pretty expositive article about Frey after it was discovered that he made up or juiced large portions of his memoir. For example, there's a section of the book that tells a story of Frey surviving a fatal crash that took the lives of two teenagers when he was never on that train nor had any involvement in the situation. Weeks after the article broke, Oprah asked Frey to come back onto the show where he faced livid viewers and an even more livid Oprah. She told James that she felt duped and betrayed, a feeling that was shared by her audience and millions of people around the world. She asked why James felt the need to lie to herself and the readers, and he tried everything, making every excuse that he could think of. He claimed that he altered a lot of the details, but that the overall plot was real. The studio audience responded with waves of boos and gasps and groans. Winfrey later apologized for the mistreatment from her audience because it wasn't her intention, but the damage had already been done. His career as a writer is currently non-existent. Let's talk about some of the celebrities that she has had interactions with. Number four, Cindy Crawford. Model and actress Cindy Crawford has called Oprah out over their 1986 interview that took place on her show, where Oprah asked the then 20-year-old to expose herself to the crowd. Crawford reflected on the interview in a new documentary called The Supermodels on Apple TV+. Plus. Everyone has a plus now. The documentary spotlights the careers of several models like Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, and of course Cindy Crawford. In a clip from the documentary, Winfrey is heard introducing the then aspiring supermodel to the Oprah Winfrey show before she is asked, did she always have this body? I mean, this is unbelievable. Come on, stand up. Now that's what I call a body. Thank you, that's my impression of Oprah. She is visibly uncomfortable and sheepishly stands up before the studio audience cheered as she showed off her figure. According to Cindy, she felt like a child in that moment being told what to do by her superior. She felt that the moment was more of a show us why you're worthy of being here type situation than anything else. At the time, this was just some weird thing that Oprah asked her to do, but it morphed and mutated into one of the most uncomfortable moments in her early years in modeling. The most shocking thing for her was the fact that it was Oprah Winfrey trying to tell her what to do. The woman who was known for her kindness and generosity made her feel like a puppet. Number three, where's the beef? In spring of 1996, the United Kingdom apparently experienced an outbreak of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or mad cow disease, since I probably butchered that last part. According to the FDA, the disease destroys cow's central nervous system, and if humans eat it, then we get zombies. No, but they uh, can contract a deadly variant called Kreutzfeld Jacob disease. During the Mad Cow Scare, the Oprah Winfrey show booked Howard Lyman, the former cattle rancher, had adopted a vegetarian lifestyle, and he went to work for the Humane Society's Eating with Conscience Animal Welfare Campaign, and he appeared on the show to discuss the threat of Mad Cow to Americans. He pointed out that feeding the remains of Mad Cow to infected cattle or any other animals could have facilitated a spread, and such practices were apparently common in the United States. Oprah was stunned and vowed that she would never eat a burger again. And it turns out her influence and her millions of viewers were so large that only a few hours after that statement and the episode aired, she declared to never eat a hamburger ever again and the price of beef stock plummeted, staying at an all-time low for two months. One Texas rancher actually lost an estimated $6.7 million that year and organized a class action lawsuit against Oprah and her show for talking trash about American beef. After about six weeks of a trial, she won, leaving one man with no farm and out thousands of extra dollars in legal fees. Number two, Tom Cruise. Despite this man being in the Mission Impossible franchise, he's been in a lot of movies produced by himself. You didn't think Hollywood forgot about Oprah, did you? Following the announcement that he was engaged to Katie Holmes in the early 2000s, Tom appeared on an episode of the Oprah Winfrey Show, and it has gone down as one of the most iconic TV moments of all time. From the moment he steps on stage, things are just going wrong. He throws arms in the air, he rubs Oprah's shoulder like she's got a stain that just won't come out. Tom jumped on her couch, grabbed her hands over and over,
over. She couldn't even get any questions out. Eventually, Oprah was like, okay, I'm done. Bring Katie out. And then Tom is just running through the hallways as cameras follow him Blair Witch style. The moment cemented Tom as a man with many hidden personalities, and while it has not affected his work as an actor per se, ever since that day, whenever he's brought in for press of any kind or interviews, all entrances and exits must be locked at all times for everyone's safety. Again, this man may be in movies still, but they're rarely anything new or good. Number one, Whoopi Goldberg. In author Kitty Kelly's unauthorized Oprah biography, Kelly claims that Whoopi Goldberg became a persona non grata or an unwelcome person to Oprah after Whoopi was nominated for an Oscar for her role in the original version of The Color Purple. The book noted that following the honor, the comedian never appeared on Oprah's show again and was noticeably shunned from her 2006 Legends Ball. It wasn't until Oprah invited the entire cast of The Color Purple onto the show that the so-called feud was addressed. It turns out Oprah actually ran into Whoopi at Tyler Perry's party sometime around 2006, just after the snub. Goldberg confronted Oprah, leading to a hilariously adorable moment between them. She asked if she was mad at her, to which Oprah said, I thought you were mad at me. Well, that's crazy. They mutually agreed that they really should have just picked up the phone a long time ago and settled the dispute. Number 10, Cindy Crawford. Model and actress Cindy Crawford has called Oprah out over their 1986 interview that took place on her show, where Oprah asked the then 20-year-old to expose herself to the crowd. Crawford reflected on the interview in a new documentary called The Supermodels on Apple TV+. Everyone has a plus now. The documentary spotlights the career of several models like Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, and of course Cindy Crawford. In a clip from the documentary, Winfrey is heard introducing the then aspiring supermodel to the Oprah Winfrey show before she asked her, did she always have this body? This is unbelievable. Stand up, now that's what I call a body. She is visibly uncomfortable and sheepishly stands up before the studio audience cheered as she showed off her figure. According to Cindy, she felt like a child in that moment, being told what to do by her superior. She felt that the moment was more of a show us why you're worthy of being here type situation. At the time, this is just one of those weird things that Oprah asked her to do, but it morphed and mutated into one of the most uncomfortable moments in her early years in modeling. The most shocking thing for her was the fact that this was Oprah Winfrey trying to tell her what to do. The woman known for her kindness and generosity made her feel like a puppet. Number 9, Seth MacFarlane. The creator of Family Guy and the Ted series is not a fan of Miss Oprah Winfrey. During the whole 2020 situation with the masks and the isolation, you know what I'm talking about, Seth decided to share some words of wisdom about Oprah Winfrey. He started by acknowledging that Oprah had done some pretty altruistic things with her career, but that she used her platform to amplify the voices of outlandish characters rather than legitimate scientists or medical professionals. The post included a link to the LA Times that discussed the misinformation from Dr. Phil and of course Dr. Oz. He was claiming that a ton of what was discussed on their shows was nothing more than misinformation and entertaining disasters. The Cash Me Outside girl, the purple guy who drank silver water like it was his job, and so many more that I can't actually talk about online. He called Oprah Winfrey out for starting as a legitimate show with the goal of educating and instead morphed into this misinformation platform. Number 8, Rose McGowan. A ton of A-listers out there will be on Oprah's side through thick and thin, just the way it is. However, Scream alumni and Me Too activist Rose McGowan is not one of those people. The former Charm star tweeted a photo from 2014 involving Oprah kissing the cheek of one of the most disgraced men in Hollywood history. Can't really say his name, but you know exactly who I'm talking about. The photo was taken from the 2014 Critics' Choice Movie Awards. She posted about on Twitter that she was glad to see the ugly truth about Oprah coming to light. And she said that she wished Oprah was real, but sadly she was not. According to Rose, she is as fake as they come, hashtag lizard. Winfrey claimed that she did not know what was going on back then and regretted being so close to such a terrible man. A terrible man that I really wish we could talk about, but nope, that's not happening. Number 6, Kid Rock. So Kid has never really been shy about his opinions on anything, especially when it comes to Oprah. A while back, Kid Rock was escorted out of his own steakhouse in Nashville for ranting about Oprah in an alcohol-fueled tirade. He told TMZ that his PR team actually tried to get him on Oprah at one point, and apparently Oprah's team wanted Kid to write down five reasons why he loved their show. He then said F that and threw away the offer. Over the following years and to this day, he has tweeted his opinions and feelings towards Oprah, with the big summary being that he just doesn't vibe with her, literally saying that he could not explain why. Well, maybe it was because he didn't believe that she was nice or charitable, but that he was certain that she was secretly a menace, and look where we are now. Number 6, Mel Gibson. There has been a ton of misinformation spread across the internet since this whole Oprah situation has gone down. For a while, people really believed that Jason Momoa and Tom Hanks had inside information on Oprah, and that it needed to be shared with the world. 
world. But that was all a lie and neither of those people ever said a word about Oprah. Another celebrity brought into the mix for some reason is Mel Gibson, a man fueled by controversy. For the past few weeks, clips and comments have been making their way across the globe, alleging that Mel Gibson has the inside scoop on Oprah's secret agenda, ready to share it with the world. But that once again turned out not to be true. In fact, it was just someone who really loves using AI to try and make content. In fact, Mel has spoken out about claiming that he has never received inside info on Oprah and that he was fairly neutral on this so-called hate towards her. Number 5. Seal This man may be known for his vocal chops, but he should also be known for meme making abilities. Just days after the Golden Globes, Seal posted a meme on Instagram consisting of several photos of Oprah Winfrey cozying up with a man who I will not be naming. He's a guy who produced half of Quentin Tarantino's movies and was a main character of the Me Too movement that happened back in 2017. He and Oprah were photographed spending time together and one photo even made it look like Oprah was pushing singer Rita Ora towards him. Seal captioned the image saying a bunch of stuff that I just cannot quote but the meme itself read, when you have been part of the problem for a decade but suddenly they all think you are the solution. Well I'm not sure how deep this feud goes but on the surface it seems like Seal has been trying to warn us that something is up for years. Number 4. Ice Cube Ice may have gotten his career thanks to his epic music chops both as a solo artist as well as during his time with the NWA. But these days you probably know him as the guy from Ride Along or 21 Jump Street. Ice Cube started acting in movies in 1991, debuting in the film Boys in the Hood as Doughboy. He continued to act over and over again, starring in movies like Friday, Anaconda and Are We There Yet? His dislike for Oprah comes from the fact that while he has starred in several films and has become more widely known for those films, she's never actually invited him onto the show. She's even asked his co-stars to appear rather than himself on multiple occasions. In 2006, Ice Cube expressed his frustrations, saying that his barbershop co-stars Cedric the Entertainer and Eve were all invited onto the show while he was left on the sidelines. He pointed out how crazy that is, the fact that she's had all these people with dark pasts and convictions, plus if he wasn't a rags to riches story then who was? We did get a little piece of that story in the film Straight Out of Compton in 2015, a film that received massive critical success and that was never mentioned on Oprah's show. Number 3. Jason Momoa Aquaman, the enemy of Don Torito and now the man speaking out on the Oprah Maui scandal, Jason Momoa is a gifted actor and by all accounts a gifted person too. Recently, several news outlets have claimed that Jason is on the opposing side of the fund. According to these outlets, Jason posted a video to Instagram where he addresses the fires and offers his own support to the victims. While never mentioning anyone by name, he mentions that some may use this as a way to exploit or make profit, but that is not his intentions. The clip went viral and as you can guess, many outlets were interpreting everything that they could, with the big headlines being Jason Momoa calls out Oprah for wildfires. While not completely inaccurate, the general consensus is that there is no bad blood between these people. Jason has yet to specify who would actually be profiting from this, but since the backlash, he has been posting videos on a regular basis, updating his followers on the situation, and also his position in assisting with things so far. Of course, Jason has donated money to the People's Fund and has also teamed up with Dwayne Johnson to do public functions and collaborations to raise awareness and scrape together as much money for the people of Maui as possible. Number 2. Ludacris Ludacris appeared on Oprah in 2004 to promote the film Crash. He claimed that Oprah ambushed him with criticism about hip hop lyrics instead of talking about the critically acclaimed movie that he was there to plug. Ludacris has since claimed that Oprah edited the show to make herself seem more favorable to audience members. He said that during a separate interview that she had edited out a lot of his comments while keeping her own in. Of course, it is her show, but they were doing a show on racial discrimination, and she gave Ludacris a hard time as a rapper when he came on her show as an actor. He then revealed that his interview was extremely last minute, not knowing if it was a real thing, roughly 24 hours before. Following the interview on Oprah, she pulled him aside to a green room where he claims to have been berated by her. According to Oprah, having a rapper on her show made her feel like she was empowering them. He said that it was like being at someone's house who really doesn't want you there. And at that point, he had already been very uncomfortable, but that was a little cherry on top. Her main concern was his use of the n-word in lyrics, but he quickly pointed out the hypocrisy of having people like Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock on the show. These guys were also famous for using the slur in their sets. Oprah's shadiness was on full display following that interview from Ludacris. Number 1. Herself Oprah is taking the top spot on a list of people exposing Oprah. Because yes, she has been doing it since day one. Her talk show is all about bringing the most vulnerable people onto her show to get views. She's brought in violence victims, health experts, fake psychologists, and convicted felons onto her program all for the sake of profit. As the years went by, her style was 
was adapted by more and more studios, creating shows like Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, both equally as controversial. Not to mention a few years ago when she wrote a book detailing her early life and rise to the top, revealing some truly dark truths about her home life. She herself was considered to be a tyrant by her family, but it seems that whatever negative juju lived in that house, it really rubbed off on her. Number 10, Lance Armstrong. Seven-time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone down in history as a man who is unable to ride a bike without chemical training wheels. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey from 2013, Lance was brought on to discuss the allegations floating around regarding his status as a Tour de France winner. While several sources claimed that Lance had, several sources claimed that Lance had to take performance-enhancing substances to win each and every race, as well as a type of transfusion involving the red life juice that lives inside of all of us. Armstrong went on air and fessed up to every single thing that they were claiming he had done. However, he did deny the notion that he was some kind of like a mastermind who would control his teammates and force them to join in his extracurricular activities. But amidst his admission of guilt, say that 10 times fast, there was a moment where he tried to pin the situation on his battle with cancer. He wraps it up by saying that he should have tried harder to cancel the culture rather than create more of a problem. He was stripped of all seven Tour de France titles and has since lived in exile among the cycling world. Number nine, the fabricated memoir. Oprah launched her book club in 1996, a reading encouraging segment from her talk show that turned any book that she chose into a bestseller. In September 2005, Winfrey picked A Million Little Pieces, a brutal and painful memoir by James Frett about his years-long struggle with substance control issues. A Million Little Pieces became the best-selling non-fiction book of the year, and Frey was asked to appear on her talk show to discuss the book that Oprah called gut-wrenching. However, the following year, a news outlet ran a very expositive article about Frey after it was discovered that he made up or juiced large portions of his memoir. For example, there's a section of the book that he tells the story of surviving a fatal train crash that took the lives of two teenagers when he was never on that train or even involved in that in any way, shape, or form. Weeks after the article broke, Oprah asked Frey to return to the show where he faced livid viewers and an even more livid Oprah. She told James that she felt duped and betrayed, a feeling that was shared by her audience and millions of readers around the world. She asked why James felt the need to lie to herself and her readers, and he tried everything, making every excuse in the world. He claimed that he altered a lot of the details, but that the overall plot was real, you know? The studio audience responded with a massive wave of boos, gasps, and groans. Winfrey later apologized for the mistreatment from her audience, as it wasn't her intention, but the damage was already done, and his career as a writer is non-existent. Number eight, Kid Rock. Kid has never been shy about his opinions on anything, especially when it comes to Oprah Winfrey. A while back, Kid Rock was escorted out of his own steakhouse in Nashville for ranting about Oprah in a no-no juice fuel tirade. He told TMZ that his PR team actually tried to get him on the Oprah show at one point. Oprah's team just wanted him to write down five reasons why he loved her show, and he said F that and threw away that piece of paper that they gave him. Over the following years and to this day, he has tweeted his opinions and feelings about Oprah with the big summary being that he just kind of doesn't vibe with her. Literally saying that he couldn't explain why he hated her, maybe it was because he didn't believe that she was nice or charitable, but that he was certain that she was secretly a menace. Kid's career hasn't been great in general, but these comments about Oprah did not help his case. Number seven, David Letterman. A majority of the world believes that Oprah's feud with David Letterman dates back to 1995 after he made an awkward joke at the Academy Awards, but Letterman claims that their beef actually started a lot earlier than that. According to an interview between David and late night host Jon Stewart, David claims that his feud with Oprah began many years before the Oscars. He explained that he ran into Oprah when they were both on vacation with other people and explained that she was with Stedman at the time and he was with his then girlfriend Regina. David decided it would be funny to prank Oprah one day at lunch. The story goes that the waiter walked past him and he simply pointed to Oprah and said, that woman right there, yep, she's been kind enough to take care of our check. They then got up and left Oprah with the bill. Yeah, I'm not surprised that she's not stoked about that. Even millionaires don't appreciate sneaky people. Winfrey has never cited that as being the source of her anger, though apparently she felt the feud began when she was a guest on his talk show in 1986. David continued to make rude jokes at her expense and made her feel extremely uncomfortable. She didn't speak to him for 16 years after that. Now, David is a strange man, especially when it comes to female guests, so it's no surprise that 
she was uncomfortable the entire time. Number six, Whoopi Goldberg. In author Kitty Kelly's unauthorized Oprah biography, Kelly claims that Whoopi Goldberg became a persona non grata or an unwelcome person to Oprah Winfrey after she was nominated for an Oscar for her role in The Color Purple. The book noted that following the honor, the comedian never appeared on Oprah's show again and was noticeably shunned from her 2006 Legends Ball. It wasn't until Oprah invited the entire cast of The Color Purple onto the show that their feud was addressed. Turns out that Oprah had actually ran into Whoopi at Tyler Perry's party sometime after 2006 and Goldberg confronted Oprah, leading to a hilariously adorable moment between them. She asked Oprah why she was mad at her, to which Oprah replied, why am I mad at you? I thought you were mad at me. <laughs> what? They mutually agreed that they really should have just picked up the phone and figured things out like adults. Number five, Seal. This man may be known for his vocal chops, but he really should be known for his meme making abilities. Just days after the Golden Globe, Seal posted a meme on Instagram consisting of several photos of Oprah Winfrey cozying up with a man whose name I can't say on the internet because he's heinous. So he's just, uh, he's the guy who produced half of Quentin Tarantino's movies. He was the main cause of the Me Too movement and we're gonna call him Java the Hutt for this list. Oprah and Java were photographed spending time together and one photo even made it look like Oprah was pushing singer Rita Ora towards Mr. Hutt. Seal captioned the image by saying a bunch of stuff that I'm not allowed to quote because the gosh darn internet. The meme itself read, when you have been part of the problem for a decade, but suddenly they all think you are the solution. I'm not sure how deep this feud goes, but on the surface, it seems that Seal has been trying to warn us about some things for years. Number four, Ice Cube. Ice may have gotten his career thanks to his epic music chops, but eh, both as a solo artist as well as his time with the NWA, but these days you probably know him as the guy from Ride Along or 21 Jump Street. Ice Cube started acting in movies in 1991, debuting in the film Boys in the Hood as Doughboy. He continued to act over and over again, starring in movies like Friday, Anaconda, and my favorite, are we there yet? His dislike for Oprah comes from the fact that while he has starred in several films and has become more wildly known for that, she never invited him onto the show. She's even asked his co-stars to appear more often than himself on multiple occasions. In 2006, Ice Cube expressed his frustrations, saying that his barbershop co-stars Cedric the Entertainer and Eve were invited onto the show while he was left onto the sidelines. He pointed out how crazy it is that she has all of these people with dark pasts and convictions onto her show, plus if he wasn't a rags to riches story, who was? If you don't know that story, I recommend you watch the film Straight Outta Compton from 2015. It received massive critical success and it's never mentioned on Oprah's show once, so go check it out. Number three, Angelina Jolie. You would imagine that two people who consider themselves to be humanitarians would agree on something, but apparently that's just not the case between Angelina Jolie and Oprah Winfrey. According to an insider close to Miss Winfrey, Angelina actually refused to help Oprah launch her Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls in South Africa. According to the source, Oprah reached out seeking celebrity sponsorship and public backing for her project, but when she reached out to Angelina, she was met with a swift no. Oprah assumed that Angelina, of all people, would jump at the chance to represent such an incredible cause, especially considering how much Angelina apparently just loved Africa. But the no was a devastation, and she would never ask for Angie's help again. Many believe the hate towards Oprah stems from her decision to publicly side with Jennifer Aniston after Angelina had split from Brad Pitt. To be fair to Oprah, that split came literally weeks before the whole Brangelina thing became public, so eh. Number two, Ludacris. Ludacris appeared on Oprah in 2004 to promote the film Crash. He claimed that Oprah ambushed him with criticism about hip hop lyrics instead of talking about the critically acclaimed movie that he was there to plug. Luda has since claimed that Oprah edited the show to make herself seem more favorable to her audience. He said that during a separate interview, she edited out a lot of his comments while keeping her own in. Of course, it's her show, but they were doing a show on racial discrimination and she gave Luda a hard time as a rapper when he came onto the show as an actor. Luda revealed that his interview was extremely last minute, not knowing if it was a real thing until roughly 24 hours before. Following the interview on Oprah, she pulled Luda aside to a green room where he claims to have been berated by the talk show host. According to Oprah, having a rapper on her show just made her feel like she was empowering them. He said it was like being at someone's house who just didn't want you to be there. At that point, he had already been uncomfortable, but that was just a little cherry on top. Her main concern was his use of the N-word in lyrics, but he quickly pointed out the hypocrisy of having people People like Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock onto the show who were famous for using the slur in their sets. Oprah's shadiness was on full display following the interview from Luda. And at number one, Mel Gibson. 
Now there was a ton of misinformation spread across the internet since Oprah's whole situation went down. For a while, people believed that Jason Momoa and Tom Hanks had inside information on Oprah and that it needed to be shared, but that was all a lie and neither of those people ever said a word about Oprah. Another celebrity that's been brought into this mix is Mel Gibson, a man fueled by controversy. For the past few weeks, clips and comments have been making their way across the globe, alleging that Mel Gibson has inside information on Oprah's secret agenda. Yeah, ready to share it with the entire world, but that, once again, is a lie. It turns out that there are people out there who just love using AI to make stuff up. It would appear that someone somewhere wrote controversial Oprah into a bar and BAM! Mel Gibson's on the headline. Now I don't use AI for a lot, I'm not I'm not actually sure if you like put it in a search bar, I don't know how AI works. But Mel has spoken out claiming that he's never received any inside information and that he was fairly neutral on his so-called hate. So if you see anything about Mel on the internet, just know it's probably not true. Number 10, Cindy Crawford. Model and actress Cindy Crawford has called Oprah out over their 1986 interview that took place on her show, where Oprah asked the then 20-year-old to expose herself to the crowd. Crawford reflected on the interview and a new documentary called The Supermodels on Apple TV Plus, Everyone Has a Plus Now. The documentary spotlights the career of several models like Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, and of course Cindy Crawford. In a clip from the documentary, Winfrey is heard introducing the then aspiring supermodel to the Oprah Winfrey show before she asked, hey, did she always have this body? <laughs> this is unbelievable. Stand up! Now that's what I call a body. She's visibly just uncomfortable and sheepishly stands up before the studio audience cheers as she shows off her figure. According to Cindy, she felt like a child in that moment, being told what to do by a superior. She felt that the moment was more of a show us why you're worthy of being here type thing. At the time, this was just some weird thing that Oprah asked her to do, but it morphed and mutated into one of the most uncomfortable moments of her early years in modeling. The most shocking thing for her was the fact that this was Oprah Winfrey trying to tell her what to do. The woman known for kindness and generosity and cars made her feel like a puppet. Number nine, Jason Momoa, Aquaman, the enemy of Dom Toretto, and now a man speaking out on Oprah Winfrey and Maui. Jason Momoa is a gifted actor, and by all accounts, he is a gifted person as well. Recently, several news outlets have claimed that Jason is on the opposing side of this whole Maui fun thing. If you don't know what that's about, go check out some of our previous videos about Oprah Winfrey where we do it in, you know, deeper dive. According to these outlets, Jason posted a video to Instagram in which he addresses the fires and offers his own support to the victims while never actually mentioning anyone by name. He does mention that some may use this as a way to exploit or make profit, but that was not his intentions. The clip went viral, and as you can guess, outlets were interpreting everything that they could out of it, with the biggest headline being Jason Momoa calls out Oprah for wildfires. While not completely inaccurate, the general consensus is that there is actually no bad you know, juju between these people. Jason has yet to specify who would profit from this, but since the backlash, he's been posting videos on a regular basis, updating people on the situation, and his position in assisting so far. Of course, he's already donated lots of money to the island and has teamed up with Dwayne Johnson to do public functions and collaborations and raise awareness, so that's great considering where it spawned from. Number eight, Dwayne Johnson. Now, when it comes to the whole Maui fun situation, there is one person who is usually left out of the conversation, and that is Dwayne Johnson. Johnson is, of course, one of the most bankable men in Hollywood, starring in like a million franchises, mostly in the jungle. He decided to partner with Oprah Winfrey to create the People Fund of Maui, donated $5 million of his own money to match Oprah's donation. The Rock received a large amount of criticism, but not nearly as much as Oprah did. The main reason being is that The Rock actually has a significantly smaller net worth, and the money that he donated was actually his own money. He's still only a millionaire, everyone. He's just as poor as the rest of us. Thousands of his followers have defended him rather than passing judgment because, hey, five million dollars is a ton of money, and it's gonna make a lot of people's lives that much easier. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of information regarding his position towards Oprah, but the comments on their posts have been turned off and the People's Fund of Maui has raised a lot of money since, so at least something good's coming from all the negativity. Number seven, Tom Hanks. Rumors have been circulating online that Tom Hanks may have received some inside information about the Maui wildfires that pertain to Oprah Winfrey. Now, a ton of videos have been published online in the last like couple months claiming that Oprah orchestrated the Maui wildfires and hired a private team of firefighters to make it look more real. According to several media outlets, Tom was made aware of a secret plot because, you know, he's so close to Oprah. The two have been known to share the occasional night out and some pasta. Well, it turns out that these were, in fact, 
rumors created by an AI. Someone told the computer to write a story about Tom Hanks and Oprah, and it came up with Oprah sets Maui on fire. So that should tell you how good AI is. While a catching thumbnail and surely a fun bit of information, the reality is that Tom has no idea what's going on. When asked about his position on the Maui fund, he had nothing but positive things to say and is actually a little disappointed with the reaction from the world. When America's dad tells you he's disappointed in you, that, that's just an extra level of hurt. Number six, Oprah Winfrey herself. Oprah is taking one of the bigger spots on this list because she has been trying to warn us about herself since day one. Her talk show is all about bringing the most vulnerable people on and getting views. She's brought violence victims, health experts, fake psychologists, and even convicted felons onto her program, all for the sake of making a few bucks. As the years went by, her style was adapted by more and more studios, creating shows like Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, who were both equally as controversial. Not to mention a few years ago when she wrote a book detailing her life and rise to the top, she revealed some truly dark things about her home life, again, covered that in detail in a different video. She herself was considered to be a tyrant by her family, but it seems that whatever negative juju was in that that house rubbed off on her forever. Now, there are actually a pretty limited number of celebrities who warned us about Oprah, because overall, most stories are fake that are out there in the world. So let's talk about some lives that have been destroyed by Oprah Winfrey when they actually did go on her show for real. Number five, a fabricated memoir. Oprah launched her book club in 1996, a reading encouraging segment from her talk show that turned any book that she chose into a bestseller. In September of 2005, she picked A Million Little Pieces, a brutal and painful memoir by James Fret about his years long struggle with substance control issues. A Million Little Pieces became the best selling non fiction book of the year, and Frey was asked to appear on her talk show to discuss the book that Oprah called Gut Wrenching. However, the following year, a news outlet ran a very expositive article about Frey after it was discovered that he made up or juiced large portions of his memoir. For example, there is a section of the book that tells the story of Frey surviving a fatal train crash that took the lives of two teenagers. He was never on that train nor did he have any involvement with that situation. Weeks after the article broke, Oprah asked Frey to return to the show where he faced livid viewers and an even more livid Oprah. She told James that she felt duped and betrayed and that feeling was shared by her audience and millions of people who read that book. She asked why James felt the need to lie to herself and the readers and he tried everything, making every excuse that he could think of. He claimed that he altered a lot of the details but that the overall plot was real. The studio audience responded with a massive wave of boo gasps, and groans. Winfrey later apologized for the mistreatment from her audience as it was not her intention, but the damage was already done and his career as a writer is currently non-existent. Number four, Harry and Meghan. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan have appeared in the public eye more and more in the past few years. After leaving the duties of their royal family to live on their own, they decided to capitalize on their so-called fame by releasing a series of different medias, books, podcasts, documentaries, and in 2021, they sat down with Oprah Winfrey to air out every piece of dirty laundry that was left in their hamper. Of course, the royal family does not appreciate these secrets being shared with, you know, the world. So not only was Harry blacklisted by them, but the interview kind of soiled the royal's reputation as good people. According to fans of Oprah, the interview made the couple look more villainous than they surely intended. Following the interview, their public image was slightly tainted, and with more media coming out, it just made the situation even worse. Meghan got a podcast and couldn't keep up with material for the first year. They made a documentary that people just don't like, so who knows what they'll get up to next. It certainly will not be anything good. Number three, Lance Armstrong. Seven time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone down in history as a man who is unable to ride a bike without using some chemical training wheels. In an interview with Oprah from 2013, Lance was brought on to discuss the allegations floating around regarding his status as a Tour de France winner. Several sources claimed that Lance had to take performance enhancing substances to win each race, as well as a type of transfusion involving the red life juice that flows inside of all of us. Armstrong went on air and fessed up to every single thing that had been claimed about him, except he did deny the notion that he was some kind of a mastermind who was controlling his teammates and forcing them to join in his extracurricular activities. But amidst his omission of guilt, say that 10 times fast, there was a moment where he tried to pin the situation on his battle with cancer. He wraps it up by saying that he should have tried harder to cancel the culture rather than create more of a problem. He was stripped of all seven Tour de France titles and has since lived in exile among the cycling world and honestly just the world in general. Number two, where's the beef? In spring 1996, the United Kingdom apparently experienced an outbreak of bovine spongiform
form encephalopathy or mad cow disease, since I can't pronounce that last word properly. According to the FDA, the disease destroys cow central nervous systems and if humans eat the infected meat, you get zombies. No, but they can contract a deadly variant called Kretzfeld Jacob disease. During the mad cow scare, the Oprah Winfrey show booked Howard Lyman. The former cattle rancher had adopted a vegetarian lifestyle and went to work for the Humane Society's Eating with Co-Science Animal Welfare Campaign. And he appeared on the show to discuss the threat of mad cows to America. He pointed out that feeding the remains of mad cow to infected cattle or other animals could have facilitated the spread and that such practices were actually pretty common in the US. Oprah was stunned and vowed that she would never eat a burger ever again. It turns out her influence and her millions of viewers were so large that only a few hours after the episode aired and she declared to never eat a hamburger again, the price of beef? plummeted, staying at an all time low. Like anyone who had stocks in the beef industry just not good. One Texas rancher lost an estimated $6.7 million and organized a class action lawsuit against Oprah and her show for talking trash about American beef. After a six week trial, she won, leaving someone with no farm and out thousands of extra dollars in legal fees. And at number one, Tom Cruise. Despite this man being in Mission Impossible, he has been in a lot of movies produced by Tom Cruise. You didn't think Hollywood forgot about the Oprah show, did ya? They didn't. Following the announcement that he was engaged to Katie Holmes in the early 2000s, Tom appeared on an episode of the Oprah Winfrey Show that has gone down in history as one of the most chaotic TV moments of all time. From the moment he steps on stage, things are just going wrong. He throws his arms out in the air, he rubs Oprah's shoulder like she's a genie or she's got a stain that just won't come out. Tom jumped on her couch, grabbed her hands, and she couldn't even get a question out. Eventually, Oprah was like, all right, whatever, just bring Katie Holmes out, and the cameras followed Tom as he ran around the studio trying to get her, like he was the nature guy running through a jungle like Steve Irwin back in the day. The moment cemented Tom as a man with many hidden personalities and while it has not affected his work as an actor, ever since that day whenever he's brought in for press of any kind, all entrances and exits must be locked just to be safe. Now that didn't happen, but again, this guy might be in movies, but he's rarely in anything new that he didn't make. So. Number 10. We'll never marry Stedman. Oprah and her partner Stedman have been together for a long, long time, but have never actually gotten married. While Stedman has never explained why this is, Oprah shared her side of the story. According to Oprah, getting married would mean that she would not be able to, quote, have her own life, claiming that everything she's built on her own would be at risk, like he was some kind of a career parasite. The strangest part about her logic behind this is the fact that she said on air that she actually wanted Stedman to propose to her as soon as possible. Their relationship has survived a lot despite the years of rumors and speculation. However, a source close to Oprah said that in her four years with the show, she could tell that there was absolutely nothing there with this man. Oprah just wanted to portray herself as a woman who loved her husband, and he wasn't even her husband, so she was just someone who loved her guy. In reality, Stedman probably has a house separate to Oprah, but like one-fifth of the size. Number nine, she's a diva. On air, Oprah is portrayed as this wholesome, sweet lady, but according to her family, there is an unknown side to Oprah, hidden from fans for years. According to Barbara, Oprah's stepmother, she is one of the most controlling people that you're ever going to meet in your entire life. She she claims that Oprah would not allow them to stay at her house whenever they would try to visit, forcing them to stay in hotels with money out of their own pockets. Barbara also said that Oprah was quick to anger when it came to her staff, with several people being fired over the years left and right. But that's not all. Despite being a billionaire, Barbara allows Oprah to stay at her house when she comes for visits, but apparently Oprah hates every second of that. From the first time she stayed till probably last week, Oprah just complains about her bed sheets that aren't a thousand threads and that her bath towels aren't big enough, but big bath towels are a luxury, so I get that one. This woman has billions of dollars to do literally anything that she wants, but apparently the only thing she wants to do is make her family feel bad. Number eight, her spiritual beliefs. I'm going to start this entry by clarifying that I'm not making fun of your beliefs if you're spiritual. Please know this entry is not about you, it's about Oprah and just Oprah. In an interview with Harper Bazaar, Oprah mentioned her daily morning routine that starts at 8.30 with various spiritual exercises. After reading Gathered Truths, 
students. She opens an app called Bowl of Saki that delivers teachings of the Sufi, followed by some light meditation. The controversy here comes from Oprah inviting several self fulfillment gurus onto her show and gushing about them over the years, and especially Guru Gary Zuka's preachings. Oprah herself claimed to have secret spiritual knowledge about tapping into personal courage and giving general spiritual advice. She stopped diving too deep into spirituality after the backlash from her fans and readers of her magazine. Number 7. Wild Child Several books have been published about Oprah over the years. Some of them were from her, some of them were not. In her own book that she wrote herself, she revealed that growing up, she was far from this easy kid to handle. When she was young, she was sent to live with her father Vernon after Oprah was caught stealing from her mom. Despite being an on-screen persona known for charity and kindness, she was actually a menace throughout most of her life, according to her family. As I've mentioned on several lists before this, Oprah's stepmother, oh, and I also said it on this one. As I mentioned just previously on this list, Oprah's stepmother is not allowed to stay at her house and she's known to be pretty controlling. She admitted to doing some pretty troubling things at a young age, including staging an amnesia bout where she broke several things in her mom's house and called the police pretending not to know what happened. Yeah, according to Oprah's mom, she was uncontrollable, ungrateful, and I'm pretty sure after that situation, just a little bit crazy. Number six, her buddy, Dr. Phil. Oprah's not just responsible for many hopes and dreams being squashed live on air, but she is also the creator of many talk show celebrities like health expert Dr. Oz and life coach Dr. Phil. Before Dr. Phil had his own show, Oprah had asked him and his courtroom consulting firm to help with the trial. Now, Before even meeting Oprah, Phil actually had zero interest in being a television personality, but Oprah decided, hey, I'm going to force this guy to do it, you know, convince him, make him see the light. According to Phil, she helped him understand the power of these shows and what they were truly made for. Profit. For Phil, he brings people on his show who are struggling with personal issues that just so happen to be great for television, like the Cash Me Outside girl. Dr. Phil made her famous, because that's fair. But it's not just Phil that's had some controversial moments. Her other protege, Dr. Oz, has had a lot of rough moments over the years. His show is centered around medicine and health. He brings so called health experts on week after week. My mom used to love this show, so unfortunately, I'm very familiar with this man. Oprah was partnered with both of these people, meaning that whenever they got money, she got some of it too. She doesn't like to advertise how much she actually makes from these guys, but considering how many episodes they have and how long the programs have been running for, it's probably a decent little chunk of cash. Number five, you know, let's get into some of the celebrities that don't like Oprah now because honestly, there's not a lot of secrets that haven't been revealed. Number five, Seth MacFarlane. The creator of Family Guy and the TED series is not a fan of Oprah Winfrey. During the whole 2020 situation with masks and the isolation, and you know what I'm talking about about, Seth decided to share some words of wisdom about Oprah Winfrey. He started by acknowledging that Oprah had done some pretty altruistic things with her career, but that she has used her platform to amplify the voices of outlandish characters rather than legitimate scientists or medical professionals. The post included a link to the LA Times that discussed misinformation from Dr. Phil and of course from Dr. Oz. He was claiming that a ton of what was discussed on their shows was nothing more than misinformation and entertaining disasters. The Cash Me Outside girl, the purple guy who drank silver water like it was his job, and so many more that I can't actually talk about on the internet. He called Oprah out for starting out as a legitimate show with the goal of education, and instead it just kind of morphed into this misinformative cartoon. Number four. Rose McGowan. A ton of A-listers out there will be on Oprah's side through thick and thin. That's just the way it is. However, Scream alumni and Me Too activist Rose McGowan is not one of those people. Former Charm star tweeted a photo from 2014 involving Oprah Winfrey kissing the cheek of one of the most disgraced men in Hollywood history. I can't say his name and we can't put pictures of him up on this video, but he looks like Java the Hutt and he worked with Quentin Tarantino, so I'm just gonna call him Java the Hutt for the rest of this video. The photo was taken from the 2014 Critics' Choice Awards. She posted on Twitter that she was glad to see the ugly truth about Oprah coming to light. She wished Oprah were real, but she's not. She's as fake as they come. Hashtag lizard. No, she didn't add that last part, but I did. Winfrey claimed she didn't know what was going on back then and regretted being so close to such a terrible man. A terrible man that I really wish we could talk about, but <laughs> can't do that. No, it's not happening. Number three. 
Kid Rock. Kid has never been shy about his opinions on anything, especially when it comes to Oprah. A while back, Kid Rock was escorted out of his own steakhouse in Nashville, Tennessee for ranting about Oprah in a no-no juice fueled tirade. He told TMZ that his PR team actually tried to get him on Oprah at one point and Oprah's team just wanted Kid to write down five reasons why he loved Oprah's show. That was it. And he said F that and threw that offer out the window. Over the following years and to this day, he's tweeted his opinions and feelings about Oprah, with the big summary being that he just kinda doesn't vibe with her. Literally saying that he could not explain why, maybe it was just because he didn't believe she was nice or charitable, but he was certain that she was secretly a menace and Look where we are now. Number two, Mel Gibson. All right, there has been a ton of misinformation spread across the internet since this whole Oprah thing has gone down. For a while, people believed that Jason Momoa and Tom Hanks had inside information on Oprah and that it needed to be shared with the world. But that was all a lie and neither of those people ever actually said a word about Oprah. Another celebrity brought into this mix is Mel Gibson. This man is fueled by controversy, so it's understandable. For the past few weeks, clips and comments have been making their way across the globe, alleging that Mel Gibson has this inside scoop on Oprah's secret agenda, then he's ready to share it with the world. But once again, this is a lie. It turns out that someone out there loves using AI to make stuff, and it would appear that someone somewhere wrote controversial Oprah into a bar and bam, there was a script. Now, I don't use AI for a lot of stuff, so I'm not really sure if that's the process or not, so that could have been a silly sentence to say. Mel has spoken out claiming that he has never actually received any inside information on Oprah, and that he's been fairly neutral on the whole Maui thing, so the so-called hate towards her is just doesn't exist. And at number one, the Maui Fund scandal. Now who would have guessed this lady who was famous for handing out cars on her show got cancelled by the world? Well it's probably because she made a career ending mistake when herself and Dwayne broke the one rule of being rich, don't ask poor people for the money. A while ago Oprah and The Rock announced that they would be starting a relief fund for the victims of Maui and the People's Fund of Maui was given a solid like 10 million dollars to get off the ground. Which is great, 10 million dollars, it's a lot of money, donated by Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne Johnson combined. So so why is it just Oprah that gets so much hate? Well it's cause she has a net worth of like 2.8 billion dollars which is a lot of money. The world is collectively furious at Oprah for having the audacity to ask working class citizens for charity when most people can barely afford to put food on their table. Not to mention the 5 million dollars that Oprah actually put into the fund it turns out was taxed money so it's not actually her money. She was just like oh that's nice I'm just gonna put this in here for now. The Rock and Oprah donated 5 million dollars each which is great but again 5 million dollars to Oprah is like $500 to us. It's not a lot. Oprah addressed all the hate online, telling the Daily Mail that she's just disappointed in the reaction from the world. No one is focusing on the good things in the people of Maui. Instead, the world is just mad that she asked them to give her a nickel. Number 10, an advocate for Maui. Oprah has been claiming to be many things since this Maui backlash thing has started. A good boss, a charitable woman, and an advocate for the island of Maui. By starting this fund and donating her spare millions, she's made her mark in the public as a woman who can cares, so much so that she's asking you to give her your money, isn't that nice? As mentioned in previous videos, Oprah would not care about Maui or its people if she didn't have a vested stake on the island. Oprah's had property in Maui for quite some time, being almost a second home to her. When the fire started raging, she started fundraising. Think about all of the things that have happened in the past few years. We all forgot about Australia being set on fire in 2020, a lot of Western Canada was on fire earlier this year, and some parts of Florida have been underwater for a long time and they just kind of live with it. Yet Oprah has dedicated her time and money to helping out the area where she has a vacation home. Do with that what you will. Number nine, the NDAs. Confidentiality agreements are not uncommon in the world of Hollywood. Marvel will literally track you down if you say anything about their movies to anyone. In Kitty Kelly's tell-all book about Oprah, the author mentions there were confidentiality agreements that co-workers and guests were made to sign. This included everyone from Tom Cruise to the guy who made his breakfast in the morning. Over 500 staff members were forced to sign these documents with one former employee, Elizabeth Cody, trying to write a book about her time working for Oprah, but she was eventually stopped by the courts, still being tied to the agreement. The NDAs were not meant to be a way to just keep show secrets safe, but any and all of Oprah's secrets as well. According to Elizabeth, the document was signed by almost everybody in Oprah's life, and she may have had this brand of sweetness and kindness, but that it was just not how she was. Elizabeth felt that she was in Oprah's pocket after she signed the paperwork. In 2010, there was even a lawsuit filed 
filed against Oprah and her company from a training performance center that was claiming that they were fired for violating the terms of her agreement, but all they did was just advertise that they were doing stuff for her show, so I'm not sure what's wrong there. Number eight, Diva. On air, Oprah is portrayed as this wholesome, sweet lady, but according to her stepmother, there's actually this unknown side to Oprah, hidden from fans for years. According to Barbara, Oprah is one of the most controlling people that you're ever gonna meet. She claims that Oprah does not allow herself and her husband to stay at Oprah's home whenever they try to visit, which means that they have to stay in hotels with money out of their own pockets. Barbara also said that Oprah was very quick to anger when it came to her staff especially, with a lot of people being fired over the years left and right for the littlest thing. But that's not all. Despite being a billionaire, Barbara allows Oprah to stay at her home when she visits, which she just complains about the entire time. The first time she ever stayed there, Oprah allegedly complained that her bed sheets weren't a thousand threads and that her bath towel wasn't big enough, but that's fair. This woman has billions of dollars to do literally anything she wants, and what, and what she wants to do is make her family feel like a burden to the world. Number seven, controversial beliefs. Oprah has had plenty of controversial people onto her show, from so-called medical experts to psychologists to celebrities. Whatever's good for TV, it's good for Oprah. One particular incident that caused a ton of backlash for Oprah was when she did an interview with Suzanne Summers. She was brought onto the show to share her beauty secrets on how she was able to look so young. According to Summers, this treatment that she does on a regular basis would help people. She claimed that she rubs estrogen cream into her skin on one arm and smears progesterone into the other arm. Um, progesterone is just a fancy way of saying steroids. She she also claimed that she took 60 supplements and vitamins a day, 40 in the morning and 20 before bed. What really stirred the pot was that this woman claimed to be a health expert and self-help author. But surprise, surprise, doctor she was not. Medical experts started bashing Oprah, claiming that this type of extreme hormone therapy was actually the cause of several diseases and illnesses, you know, like cancer. Despite Suzanne's claims that her specially made non-FDA approved bioidenticals were natural and safe, they were actually just synthetic conventional hormones that you could buy from a pharmacy. A little label smacked on the front. Oprah did everything in her power to sell this idea to her audience, believing 100% that these methods were useful, even claiming to have used the methods to make herself feel incredible. So Oprah would rather risk her audience getting cancer than telling them the truth. Solid. Number six. The free cars. Who could forget Oprah's famous words? You get a car, you get a car, everybody got a car. The moment was historical on her series and was parodied time and time again and it still does to this day. However, what a lot of people do not know is that it wasn't as simple as here's some car keys, go have fun. That would be insane. No, when someone gives you anything on television, especially if it's free, there's a catch. For Oprah's audience, the catch was that if they wanted to drive away in their brand new car, they'd have to pay over $7,000 in taxes first. While Oprah Studio would cover the sales tax and registration for the cars, their audience members were given a choice to either pay seven grand and take the car or just simply keep that cash instead. The famous moment she shouted this on the show featured 11 real teachers who were, according to Oprah, in desperate need of a new car. They, along with the audience members, received keys in a box on camera that Oprah claimed to be for their new cars. Everything has a catch though, even now. For someone who was known for being charitable and generous, the word free really does mean something some different to Oprah. Number five, the fabricated memoirs. This is a time when Oprah kind of ruined someone's life when she brought them onto her show. Oprah launched her book club in 1996, a reading encouraging segment from her talk show that, that turned any book that she chose into a bestseller. In September 2005, Winfrey picked A Million Little Pieces, a brutal and painful memoir by James Frett about his years long struggle with substance control issues. A Million Little Pieces became the best selling nonfiction book of that year, and Frey was asked to appear on her talk show to discuss discussed the book that Oprah called gut-wrenching. However, the following year, a news outlet ran a very expositive article about Frey after it was discovered that he made up or juiced large portions of his memoir. For example, there is a section of the book that tells a story of Frey surviving a fatal train crash that took the lives of two teenagers. Well, he was never on that train and he didn't have anything to do with that situation. He just wrote about it and was like, it was there. Weeks after the article broke, Oprah asked Frey to return to the show where he faced livid viewers and an even more livid Oprah. She told James that she 
she felt duped and betrayed, which was a feeling that was shared by her audience and millions of readers around the world. When she asked James why he felt the need to lie to herself and her readers, he tried everything, making every excuse he could think of, and he claimed that he altered a lot of details, but that the overall plot was real. While the studio audience responded with a massive wave of boos, gasps, and groans, and Winfrey later apologized for the mistreatment from her audience, because that wasn't her intention. But the damage was already done, and this dude's career as a writer is non-existent. Number 4. Lance Armstrong Seven-time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone down in history as a man who was unable to ride a bike without chemical training wheels. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2013, Lance was brought on to discuss the allegations floating around regarding his status as a Tour de France winner. Several sources claimed that Lance had to take performance-enhancing substances to win each and every race, as well as a type of transfusion involving the red life juice that flows inside all of us. Armstrong went on air and fessed up to every single thing that people were claiming he had done. However, he did deny the notion that he was like a mastermind who would control his teammates and force them to join in his extracurricular activities. But amidst his admission of guilt, say that 10 times fast, there was a moment where he tried to pin the situation on his battle with cancer. He wraps it up by saying that he should have tried harder to cancel the culture rather than to create a problem. Well, unfortunately for him, he was stripped of all seven Tour de France titles and has since lived in exile among the cycling community. Number three, where's the beef? In spring of 1996, the United Kingdom apparently experienced an outbreak of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or mad cow disease, uh, since I can't pronounce that last word. According to the FDA, the disease destroys cow's central nervous system, and if humans eat the infected meat, you get zombies that can't um, No, You can contract a deadly variant called Kreutzfeldt Jacob disease, probably named after the first dude who got the disease. During the mad cow scare, the Oprah Winfrey show booked Howard Lyman. The former cattle rancher had adopted a vegetarian lifestyle, and he went to work for the Humane Society's Eating with Co-Science Animal Welfare campaign, and he appeared on the show to discuss the threat of mad cows to America. He pointed out that feeding the remains of mad cow to infected cattle or other animals could have facilitated the spread and that a lot of that was happening in the US right then and there. Oprah was stunned and vowed that she would never eat another burger ever again. Well, it turns out her influence and her millions of viewers were so large that only a few hours after the episode aired and she declared that she wasn't eating hamburgers ever again, the price of beef stock plummeted, staying at an all-time low for two months. In fact, one Texas rancher lost an estimated $6.7 million and organized a class action lawsuit against Oprah and her show for talking trash about beef. After a six-week trial, she won, leaving one dude with no farm and out hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. Number two, Trespasser. So, there is a video circulating the internet that a lot of people are interpreting as a direct message to Oprah Winfrey. Jason Momoa released a video on his Instagram a few weeks ago urging tourists not to come to Maui as the place was on fire and, you know, they didn't need anybody's help. He claimed that he appreciated anyone sharing love for the people of Maui and continued to say that there was someone trying to, like, scam people out of money that was pretending to be him online. After sharing links to several sites that were directly linked to putting money into the pockets of the people of Maui, fans decided to focus on the bit about people staying away. Now, at the same time that this was happening, Oprah and The Rock had announced the People's Fund of Maui, and the thing was that that caused a lot of backlash for Oprah. And in Jason's video, he does not include a link to the charity and doesn't even acknowledge its existence. He has since spoken about the charity, but has never actually said the names Oprah or Dwayne out loud. People are just putting two and two together though, and the internet has decided that Jason Momoa has called Oprah Winfrey a trespasser. Number one, Whoopi Goldberg. In author Kitty Kelly's unauthorized Oprah biography, Kelly claims that Whoopi Goldberg became a persona non grata or an unwelcome person in Oprah's life after Whoopi was nominated for an Oscar for her role in The Color Purple. The book noted that following the honor, the comedian never appeared on Oprah's show again and was noticeably shunned from her 2006 Legends Ball. It wasn't until Oprah invited the entire cast of The Color Purple onto the show that the so-called feud was addressed. It turns out that Oprah had actually ran into Whoopi at Tyler Perry's party sometime after the 2006 snub. Goldberg confronted Oprah, leading to a hilariously adorable moment where Oprah asked why Whoopi was mad at her, to which Whoopi he was like, oh, I'm not mad at you, I thought you were mad at me, what's going on here? They mutually agreed that they really should have just picked up the phone a long time ago and figured the whole thing out and settled the dispute. <laughs>